I'm going to be the first one to say, man, the league still needs Draymond Green, bro. I feel like Draymond is the last of a dying breed, the last of like the true tough guy. Now, granted, when you see Draymond Green, you don't get the sense like he's someone that's unapproachable. You don't get the sense he's someone that can't be connected with others. Like, I generally think Draymond is what he shows you to be. Like, you know what I mean? It's just on that court, you tap into a different space. He's the enforcer. He's the Warriors juggernaut. He's like what they always say. He's the heart and soul of the Warriors offense. And I ain't gonna front, bro. I ain't tripping about none of this shit, bro. <laughs> Keep it a bean. Obviously, you can't do some of the antics that he's been doing from stepping on Sabonis' chest putting Rudy Gobert in a headlock, getting ejected and parading around the stadium in Memphis. And now we got the latest, latest incident where he's out here slapping Knicks. Oh, man. Well, that's going to be a flagrant. I guess you got to draw the line somewhere. We already know the league was going to head down the lane where they were just going to drop the hammer on Draymond because they let him get away with so much. I ain't going to front. There's a whole compilation video of dirty Draymond Green plays. And yeah, it's kind of getting hard to defend Draymond at this point. But we're going to get right into... I mean, we all know he's already suspended indefinitely, but now the league is really about to crash down on him. And just a side note, man, I don't know if you guys noticed the joint that Stephen A put out um, earlier this week about uh, Steph Curry's leadership when he said that, yo, if it was LeBron James, we would be questioning LeBron James' leadership, but we're not measuring Steph Curry with the same ruler that we would hold LeBron James. First of all, this has nothing to do with LeBron James. I'm sick and tired of sports media O trying to slide LeBron James' name into things that don't matter. Um, this has nothing to do with him. And then secondly, Steph and Draymond are grown men. What do you want Steph to do? Talk to him? Mediate him? Like, what do you want Steph Curry to do? Draymond's a grown man worth over $200 million. Yeah, according to how much he's gotten paid in the NBA. And when you make certain money and you're kind of set at life and set in the league, he is a Hall of Famer. You know what I mean? He's probably not the most profound big you ever seen in your life with the most profound defensive player of the year but he is a hall of famer you got to give it to him the man got four chips you'd be hard pressed to find someone that's not going to induct this man um at some point so at the end of the day to me that was such a lame angle to go at steph curry like steph curry could do anything to control draymond to throw steph curry in there it's like why are we trying to put the accountability of a grown man controlling his behaviors on another grown man just weak sports media topic and talk and angles and stuff like that but we're gonna get right into it this is the draymond drama is even worse than we thought we may have the biggest warrior news since they got kd in 2016 multiple people are making the wildest claim i have heard about draymond the golden state warriors are at a breaking point i don't know if draymond green will be back as a golden state warrior mm. i'm quoting y'all figure out where i just heard that from what they're gonna trade or cut one of the big three now you might say that is stephen a smith okay he says all sorts of things okay what about zach lowe that man doesn't just talk he is the opposite of hot take and he said this depending on how long the suspension is when he comes back from it assuming he comes back from it and i'll just leave that there at, at minimum, he will have been ejected or suspended from just about half of the Warriors games, whenever that date is, again, if and when. If and when? Oh, and then Zach Lowe comes out, apologizes, cuts it out of the podcast and says, I'm sorry, uh, that was a flippant comment by me. Like, not serious, not legit. Dude, you said it twice. First, you were like, hey, if he comes back, dramatic pause. I'll just leave that right there. And then he repeated it. Dude did not misspeak. They are hearing this. It reminds you of when cameras caught Steve Kerr saying, I am so effing tired of Draymond's S. This could be the wildest ending to the Warriors dynasty we could have ever imagined. But there's something else that's just as bad. But as you know, I do YouTube. My wife does home loans. Yeah, I got front. If they were to move this dude Draymond Green, don't be surprised if he goes to the Lakers. Just don't be surprised. I wouldn't necessarily be too mad, but I don't want to hear us giving up nothing like AR-15 or any decent pieces for Draymond, but be on the lookout. If he, go, if he ends up going anywhere, it might be to LA. If Draymond is suspended for like 25 games, they have no chance of making the playoffs. Right now, they're going to put Jonathan Kaminga in that role. Look, I know JK is improving. But he is not close to Draymond. Dre elevates everything that Steph does. He is a better defender, communicator. Look, Kaminga has been good. He has good moments. He is not a consistent player to replace Draymond. And a lot of you casuals don't even realize that too. A lot of y'all feel like Draymond's some bum ass 
player on the Warriors and not realize, like, yo, bro, this dude's the power forward and the point guard sometimes. This dude directs where guys need to stand. This dude makes the extra pass when it needs to matter, all the hustle plays, and he's then forcing the paint. Like, he's not the biggest dude, but Draymond, bro, I'm not even going to lie. And is he not, like, the... 50% of the Warriors, I mean, we've seen Clay's decline. Steph is still doing his thing, but, like, bro, he's, like, the second best player on the Warriors with Clay's decline, you know? I'm just keeping it a bean. So the league is taking this over because the Warriors can't be trusted to handle Draymond. Can you believe last year when he punched Jordan Poole, the dub suspended him zero games? They let him get away with that? How is that even possible? So Draymond stepped away on his own. He made that cheesy documentary on TNT about how much he's working on himself and he put his kids in it to make us cheesy. all feel sorry for him. He has been suspended four times since then. Four times. That is insane. But you know what's even worse? The Warriors don't even have their own first round pick. It goes to Portland unless it's in the top four, which means if they tank like hell, then maybe they could have something to show for all this. It would sting so bad if the Blazers benefited from all this crap. So the only way around this is to suck so bad they're a bottom four team by the end of the season. So let's look at the league standings, not by conference. The Pistons are worse at 2-22. and 22. The Spurs and Wizards, they all have an equal chance at the number one pick. But the Dubs have 10 wins. Hey, that's not far off the fourth worst team in the league. But how would Steph Curry react if they did that? There will be major changes to this team because Draymond is actually only one of their problems. I will bet, secretly, they are almost as frustrated with Clay Thank Thompson. You. For the first time ever, he was benched at the end of a close game, missed eight of his 10 shots and seven of eight threes, so Kerr went with the young guys, Steph and Dario Saric. That must have been so tough mentally on Clay. but guess what? Nobody cares. I'm sure he's disappointed. You know, it's, it's not easy being in that situation, but this is the NBA, you know. It's a dream job for these guys, and it's also incredibly difficult. You get booed, benched, injured, traded, cut. Um, it's not easy. I love that answer. Kerr's like, uh, yeah, probably doesn't like it, but welcome to professional basketball. No one is above getting benched. Like when GM Bob Myers said he left because Clay's new contract would be tough, he's getting a statue outside of Chase Included. Center one day. Yeah, Kerr's like, I don't yeah. care. What are you giving me a thing? I'm so sorry. I was like, what is it? I gave you the look. I wasn't even, my bad. You don't see my hand is all in there. I'm, I'm signaling you without trying sorry. to give myself more things to sorry. edit. I, I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, all right. That would be tough. He's getting a statue outside of Chase Center one day. Yeah, Kerr's like, I don't care. At some point, you get benched if you suck. Deal with it. Now Shams is reporting the dubs offered Clay two years, 48 million before the season, but now there is no deal. This is the closest Clay has ever been to leaving the Warriors. I won't be shocked if it actually happens. But no one's even asking Damn. her about Wiggins at this point. He's so bad. <laughs> the ringer Yo, y'all ready for the Warriors to move on from Clay Thompson, son? We've now reached the era where the Splash Brothers is over. I haven't really been tapped into the NBA season. I'm waiting for the NFL season to wrap up so I can really dive into the NBA. And I know the Warriors are kind of mid right now, but oh my gosh, Clay. Clay I'm here, oh, bruh. To move on from Clay? Nah, so I got to react to one of Clay's uh, highlights, bro, because this dude is one of the most unsung all-time great shooters of all time and even the basketball casual knows about clay thompson so for us to have reached a point where they're even contemplating moving on and there's no longer an extension of a deal man bring him to la just came out with their newest nba player rankings wiggins has dropped from 50th in the league before the season to 80 worse than austin reeves and kyle kuzma one spot better than dylan brooks so how did he go from locking down luca then Jason Tatum to win a chip. Then about one year later, this. The Warriors can't win with that. And the reason that he has dropped, 
connects to his days in Minnesota. Wiggins was drafted number one in 2014 over Joel Embiid at three. He won rookie of the year, casually dropping 30 point games. Now he was bad on defense and inefficient, but hey, most rookies are like that, no big deal. But as the years went on, fans turned on him. His defense was so bad, there were entire YouTube videos on it, and the scoring didn't lead to wins. But the Wolves traded for Jimmy Butler in 2017 to toughen up Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. Instead, it totally backfired because Butler was disgusted by Wiggins' unmotivated attitude and huge contract. His ESPN interview was the most savage comment to Wiggs. I'm not the most talented player. Who's the most talented player on our team? Cat. Who's the most God-gifted player on our teams? Wiggs. Wiggs got the longest arms, biggest hands, can jump the highest, can run the fastest. But like, who plays the hardest? Me. Calling out his teammates Damn. by name, saying they don't play hard. They don't care. So the Wolves were dying to get rid of Wiggs and the Warriors swooped in, dealing D'Lo and a pick. So how did he become prime Kawhi one year later? The change happened during the pandemic shutdown. Steve Kerr went to Wiggs and said, it is so stupid that you're not a lockdown defender. You're 6'7 with a seven foot wingspan. It's exactly what Jimmy Butler was saying. God given talent, but doesn't try hard. So Wiggs took it to heart. He suddenly got motivated for the first time in his career. People started calling him two way Wiggs on social media. And That's that silver spoon being in the mouth of an 18 year old when he comes into the league. You know what I mean? First overall pick, he was supposed to wasn't he supposed to actually go to Cleveland instead of the Timberwolves? But since LeBron went to Cleveland, it was it was a whole bunch of things going around. But, like, that's what happens when you come into the league with a silver spoon in your mouth. We're seeing the same thing with Zion. I'm just going to keep it a bean, son. Like, we're in the skinny leg gene era of basketball, bro. Like, a lot of these players aren't motivated. I'm just going to keep it a bean. A lot of them. And I, it's scary, but let's just say 70% of them. Especially now with college players getting paid, which I'm not knocking, but... These guys are coming in spoiled feeling entitled like, yo, they don't got to earn nothing because they're giving everything to them day one. And he made his first All-Star game as a starter. Okay, BTS might have rigged the voting a little bit, but he did deserve to be there. The difference from Golden State and Minnesota was he's not the number one option. All the hype was gone. He could focus on just being an elite 3 and D guy, but something happened. Last year, Wiggs missed the last 23 games with a family crisis. Since then, he's gone. Not even back to Minnesota Wiggins. It's worse than that. The dubs would take him dropping 20 a night with bad defense at this point. Dude can't even dribble the ball. Whatever's wrong is mental. Just look at the beginning of the season. Kerr said he came into camp out of shape. Whatever happened with Wiggins' family has turned him back into that unmotivated player and he needs a way out. Now, in a recent video, I suggested trading Brandon Pazimski for Pascal Siakam. And I know a lot of fans hated that because Pods has been an amazing rookie. But what else can they do? I mean, at some point, you have to trade good young players to extend Steph window. The best argument against that is, hey, the dubs need size. Like ideally a big elite three and D center. But those guys aren't just available. Okay, the players on the market, according to Sham, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, OG Ananobi, and Pascal. Out of those, the only all-star who is like six foot eight or taller with long arms is Siakam. I know he can't shoot, but hey, maybe it's not a problem playing him and Draymond together if Draymond's not on the team. But Siakam is just one guy who might be traded. We now have four big names that could get moved. So I broke down where Levine, Siakam, and the others might go. I ain't gonna front. I think we're watching, I believe we're watching the fall of a dynasty. Uh, the Warriors look like they're on the verge of needing to make a change. Players are getting older. And Draymond, we're not even talking about Draymond's age. We're just talking about his mentality at this point. Draymond is unavailable and it's starting to become more frequently that he's unavailable but we're about to see a shift that we've probably never seen before when it comes to the golden state warriors clay thompson damn son if they move on from him it's gonna be it's gonna be different to see where he lands because this is one of the greatest shooters ever you know and he's still alive so why would the warriors not want to extend him you know what i mean but it's the era that we live in man, man let me know in the comment section what you think this is the dream on drama is even worse than we thought maybe it is i'm gonna see you guys at the top Mamba. Mm -hmm.